there's a place for everything and the place for and the United States is the place to do art about the United States because it's not like it's not like it's a boring place that it's not like there's nothing to make art about yeah. Turn my music She's asking me, you know, I really want to bring some new, young Arab artists to the gallery. Do you know anyone? And, and I need a show that's really exciting, that's different. And I said, how about Ganzir? And I described Ganzir's art, and she goes, that sounds perfect. I have to meet him. So I, I tweet Ganzir. Yo, Ganzir, this is Shiva. You don't know me, but please call me. And he's like, hey, how's it going? Whoever you are, but I'm really busy. I'm like, no, Ganzir, like, call me, like, today. So he called me, I said, this is going to sound really weird, like we've never met, but this is my story, this is who I am, I'm, I'm kind of legit, I'm not a crazy person, but I want to curate a show of your art in a gallery in New York City. And he goes, okay, let's meet. And within a week, we kind of started working on, by June, early June, we started working on the concept for the show. It's a beautiful day, but it is very cold. Um, today will be a day where I'm uh, setting up, it'll be probably the, the day before the last day. I'm setting, I'm putting aside piles. Uh, some screen prints are finished, putting those aside. Others I'm gonna set up into, set aside into like four to five different piles that'll still have another layer of, uh, uh, another layer that goes on top of color. Um, yeah, that's about it. What's happening today? Thing as like two events in a row, right? Well, well, let's see if there's no mistake. <laughs> exactly, right? right? Yeah. Exactly. And, and it's and let's see what people think in terms of what's considered offensive. 
when it's an Arab artist making art about America. Right, as opposed to the other way around. Yeah, because usually... Which is, which is what we're used to. We're used to. We're used to, like, you know, kind of liberal Americans defending, you know, Arab artists' free speech in the Arab world. And, okay, now let's see how they feel about your free speech in America, you know? Right. Um, and then, you know, of course, the fact that, you know, urban art, you know, art as a form of kind of political expression after what's happened in Paris has taken on a whole other dimension too. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how how kind of this external noise around art and politics is going to feed into your art. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I wish it was like a little bit more reflective. You know, like it. The, I don't mind the tone of color at all. The tone of color is great. Actually, if you see on this one, see you have this is double printed. Those are two I printed over. You can see it starts to get a little bit more of that. You know. Right. So everything that's exposed to light hardens and stays hardened. Right. Everything that uh, has not been been exposed to light will just wash away with water. This is just like little brushes of water. I'm right here um, in front of a Wasp Print in Brooklyn, uh, where we're going to letter press uh, some really detailed and meticulous work that would not be able to, to be done with a U.S. screen printing process. Um, um, so, um, yeah, um, all this will be in All American. This is where the screen begins. Okay. Yo, we're out in front of my studio, Gowanus. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little little spot I, I rented out from the Interference Archive, uh, which is, uh, uh, has lots of cool shit that everyone should check out. I'm here in my spot. Um, my favorite, this is my, not my favorite, but one of my favorite restaurants in the whole world. And luckily, it's right next to my studio, around the corner. So we're gonna step in for a quick bite to eat and get back to work. Lots to do before the show. I mean, I, the first art show I did in Egypt, which was in 2007, uh, was uh, called Everyday Heroes. And that was, um, the idea was to take uh, people who do these uh, very mundane jobs in society, right? So, you know, you have the garbage man, you have the cab driver, you have the, um, I don't know, there's like the guy who has a cell phone out on the street and if you need to use a phone, he charges you like, I don't know, 
75 piastres or something per minute, and you know, if you're in a pickle, you run out of battery, whatever, you need a phone. So there's a guy who has a cell phone and it's ready, and he's just there with a sign. He's like, here, you can use my phone. You know, so that guy. So all these people who kind of do these things that are so so necessary in 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 in, in the functioning of the city, the functionality of the city of, of Cairo, they they provide so much, but then we um, we don't stop to think about them. We definitely don't stop thinking of them as people. They're just there, and they just do these things, these tasks, and that we expect them to be there and do these. But then a lot of actually, the, a lot of these things are like, I feel are are so um, require an, an almost superheroic ability. So the idea for the show was to simply illustrate these people, not a super, not like not dress them in superhero costumes or anything, but just for them to be illustrated in their clothes and in their settings the way they are, but in the, the, just the style of the line art and the pose and everything is very superheroic, right? Uh, so kind of elevate them from that status of these forgettable kind of people that you don't notice to these almost legendary icons, right? So this is like sort of like what I felt was like this would be the contemporary way of uh, uh, um, training people into iconic symbols and all it's like maybe like back in uh, in, in greek times or something you would build a statue for someone right uh, like I, uh, the, the way to do it now is to like turn it into superheroes <laughs> so so that was the idea for that show and you know it's so it does it does identify these people these underprivileged if you will right as uh, these people are like fucking superheroes you know like you know, the garbage man in, in Cairo, he doesn't he doesn't what he does or what he used to do. Right now, they got like these companies into Egypt to take care of garbage, and they're doing a horrible job. It's not working, like Italian companies. Um, but what what what? How it used to be uh, growing up, um, and even throughout 2007 as well, uh, was like the garbage man would would stop by every building. And you have tall buildings in Cairo. Some of them are, um, you know, you'd have to like go up, you know, eight buildings, whatever, just by on on the stairs and knock on every single door at like you know six, seven, eight in the morning, and then that person would take it, you know, hand you their garbage, and then you compile all that garbage as you go down and carry it over your shoulder, quite heavy, you know, and you just keep doing that building next to building next to building, you know, go up, you know carry all the garbage go down put it in your truck and then carry it up and put it in your truck and you just do that and it's just like that's the guy does it like every morning you know that's like a superhero ability it's not normal people don't do that you know so that was kind of the idea to acknowledge that the, the, the just the superhero-ness of it all so I'm still on the corner but you know that like that like a little bit inwards and then that way I actually can even adjust easily Hey, so um, we're now over at Leila Heller Gallery. Going to start setting up the show. Uh, finally brought all the artwork here. Um, after a very, very, very long 48 hours of finishing everything up. Um, so, so it's time to set up and build a show. So these are, there are three of these. Why is it so hard? Gonna make up the window installation. To in Sometimes gonna look out onto the street. Let me come through here, through this uh, secret passageway. That will lead to the show. Here we have Felipe testing uh, the hanging system for the maze. Complicated. No, it's, it's, the weight is strong, it's really weird. There's nothing strong, like, the line goes in because there's weight in the center. 
I think like two triangles on top of each other. That's like because of the central gravity point. So basically, this is what I do every single country I go to. I make a work about the place, and then the people who invite me to go do that work are always like shocked. They're like, "Oh, you're gonna do make work about here? <laughs> what would what would you possibly have to say about here? This is perfect, right?" So anyway. So some places I've been to, it has been a little difficult to kind of pinpoint what to make work about. It's not entirely easy, and the, the issues to tackle aren't necessarily like so clear on the surface. That is not the case with America. The minute you arrive, it's just like everywhere you look. It's like Cairo. It's like it's so easy, you know. So it's so it's so surprising for me you know, people who just make work about nothing at all. Um, so anyway, so um, it, when they asked me to do work, and the, and the guy I, I, like automatically came up with this idea to do this show, and um, and they, they were quite resistant to the idea at first, uh, and tried to sway me in a, a little in a different direction a little bit. But um, I, I think when it seemed apparent that I had no intention of doing anything else, uh, they they went with it, and then and then but then. I think they went into it a little hesitantly at first, but then I think slowly they really got into it and really like embraced it, you know. You do things that a lot of people who live in New York don't do, right? right? So if you look at your Instagram, you, you're out, you're, you're at Coney Island one day, you're at a diner the next day, you know, you're, you go by foot and you look around everywhere, you, go, you observe everything, you, go, you soak it all in. The other thing you do that a lot of people don't do is read. I mean, yeah. and you read from like men's magazines, you know, all the way to, you know, how it's in. Right. And you really soak it all in and all of that, everything goes into your art. Yeah. You know, what Ganser sees, what Ganser thinks, what, what he hears on the subway, it all goes into your art. Yeah. So you, you know, yes, there's a lot in New York one can make art about, but that most people don't see it. Yeah. You were able to see it. Yeah. You know, and that's what makes the show so. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's like a historical record of this moment in American history. Right. Sure. Two would be the um, everybody everybody smokes. Turned out exactly the way it was intended on turning out. Uh, I wish I had uh, wrapped everything up by a week or two ago instead of today. Um, but I'm happy uh, it turned out this way, I'm happy it's over, and I hope I can sleep for a while. This is uh, my, my com commentary on the uh, culture of happiness prevalent in America, which, uh, which I feel is somehow kind of enforced uh, by, by when you look at all the iconography, you almost don't really see a sad, face, you know, not on a label of something, not on an advertisement thing, you know, uh, uh, all the celebrities have to be happy all the time, you know, so it's almost kind of like trying to indoctrinate people with this happiness, it's almost like, I don't know, like, I don't know, North Korean posters trying to indoctrinate people with order or something or whatever, right, so it's just like, be happy, be happy, be happy, right, so that's, that's kind of my take on it, by, by like observing so many happy faces and smiles, and, you know. 
So, uh, yeah, yeah, there, there are 80, 80 prints, 80 unique prints. Each one is entirely different, either via the process of the printing itself and which layer ended up on which layer, on which color of paper and so on. Some of them uh, have been hand activated with like stuff by hand, you know, like this. Try it. This is done with like a, a, a graffiti marker, okay. silver graffiti marker, for example. This one is like a collage of a collage of one, two, three, four different prints with this uh, typography on top. Is that by hand? By hand, using uh, ink, um, and so on. So you have this one, which is you probably would have had a similar one somewhere, but then there's this these lines that are done with markers. Uh, so there's, each one is really different. So there are actually like 80 unique uh, prints. Not all of them could fit in this maze, actually. I expect that um, it, it, some, like some of the stuff will resonate with ideas that people already had or things that they already knew. Like I'm, I'm not saying anything that isn't already there or hasn't been said before. So there are people who already will have these ideas, these same thoughts about things embedded in their mind, but then maybe these things aren't like out there enough, and they're gonna see. And this in this show and this guy and they're gonna be like, fuck yeah, man, you know. And then there're gonna be other people who are being like, are gonna who are gonna be like, what is this bullshit? What is this like, you know? Uh, or they're gonna be angered by some of the the the, the more critical aspects of some of the works. Um, and I feel like if you put together. Uh, if you put together a work of art or an art show or something that garners both of those reactions from the audience, then you're on the right track because uh, um, it's not like ridiculously positive and ridiculously whatever and doesn't just feed into that. And at the same time, it wouldn't be like ri ridiculously. Uh, negative to an unbalanced degree that it would only cause anger only without some people without it finding some resonance with some people so I feel trying to achieve that fine line is always a key in, in, in making a, a work that is um, right Ganzir is an Egyptian artist who is creating work in the street both during and after the January 25th revolution. But don't call him a street artist. 
Due to the political content of his work, he was arrested by the military regime in 2011 amid a crackdown on dissidents. Despite his detainment and the government's repeated attempts to curtail free speech, Genzier continued to risk his freedom to make art in Cairo, where he grew up. Fast forward to 2015, Genzier just opened up an exhibit in New York City. Titled All American, Genzier offers a critique of the American culture with art he calls concept pop. Whether in Egypt or the US, Genzier adopts new techniques to comment on issues he sees in his immediate environment.